Uh, it's a great honor and privilege to uh, be able to share with you uh, some of my thoughts. I've been studying diligently, reading the Red Book since it came out, especially over the holidays. And uh, I must say I've been totally absorbed in it, fascinated, obsessed, waking up in the middle of the night thinking about it, trying to put it together, and as you say, trying to boil it down to present to you today in some bite-sized chunks. I'm sure I'll be defeated and I will not be successful in this because it is an enormous work, enormously complicated, with many implications and so much fascinating material. But I will try to give you an overview uh, and in the course of things to answer questions that I've put up here on the board. Um, what is the Red Book? Why did C.G. Jung make it, do it, create it? How did he create it? And what's in it? Uh, so that'll take us about three hours to cover, I figure. Uh, first of all, uh, what is the Red Book? Someone asked me this question recently, and I've been pondering it ever since and trying to put it into a nutshell. What is it really? And what sort of genre does it belong to in the history of human beings' writings and uh, reflections? And, and bookmaking. Uh, I finally came to uh, what I would say, uh, what I uh, consider a, a kind of brief and succinct definition of it, uh, that the Red Book is a highly stylized record of a midlife man's dialogue with his soul. And I'll say some more about that. It's highly stylized in that it is incredibly uh, artistic and beautifully uh, created. Uh, I'll tell you about how Jung did this, how he made it. Um, and uh, I'll try to say something about what it contains, what that dialogue contains. What was Jung doing as he entered into this engagement with his own inner life? And why did he do it? Prefogon uh, contains uh, the, the, a kind of extension of the Red Book going further into uh, the dialogues with Philemon. Philemon comes back as a very important figure in the Prefungen, in the scrutinies. He's not a very significant figure. He's important, but he isn't a big figure, a central figure so much in the Red Book itself, but in the Prefungen, he's really the central figure. And the Seven Sermons to the Dead are in the Prefungen. So, uh, plus uh, a kind of beautiful conclusion in a garden where uh, Philemon is present, um, uh, Christ enters the garden, uh, Jung is there, and they have a, a discussion. And this is the end of the prefo, and this is sort of the capstone of the whole story. Um, and uh, Christ looks at Philemon and says, oh, I know who you are. You're Simon Magus. You were one of my early followers. Simon Magus is one of the early Christians, first century. Simon the Magician, and uh, Simon Magus and Helen, a young, beautiful young woman, traveled around the world together and gave lessons and did magic and so on. And so Philemon is a kind of uh, extension or another representation, Philemon and Bacchus, uh, Helen and uh, Simon Magus. And uh, so it's a Christ in the garden, Simon Magus and Jung, and at the end, uh, they speak about the beauty of Christ, that Christ, Christ taught us the beauty of suffering. And that's the end of the whole work, the beauty of suffering. Uh, the end of the uh, Liber Secundus, the end of the, the last sentence in uh, uh, the Red Book itself, uh, or in that material, it isn't even included in the Red Book, but it's in the Red Book material, uh, is this is the way. And so the first part, uh, illustrates the way or talks about the way, what is the way, and the second part um, has a lot more material uh, about uh, uh, kind of in the seven sermons a kind of cosmogony, uh, a world view, um, and um, some other very visionary material. And in that section he introduces this 
issue of the spirit of the times and the spirit of the deep. He had been living the spirit of the times. That's Freudian psychology, that's psychiatry, that's the university, that's the IPA, all the spirit of the times. Very up to date, very avant-garde, very with it. Okay, that he is putting aside and the spirit of the deep is calling him. Where does the spirit of the deep go? Into the darkness. He has no idea. This is a total mystery. So this contrast between the two spirits, the spirit of the times, which is horizontal and it extends outward, and the spirit of the deep, which goes downward and is very individual, very solitary. And then uh, it opens up with uh, a uh, confession of a midlife crisis. Here he is at the middle of life. He's achieved a lot, but he feels he's really lost his way. He's lost his soul. So the first section is called, the first chapter, Refinding the Soul, Die Wiederfindung der Seele, the, the recovery of the soul. So he feels like he's been very successful in his life, he's gone a long ways, but it's been persona, it's been surface, it's been his intellect. And where's the soul in all this? So now he wants to go in search of the soul, to recover the soul. Wiederfindung means to re find again. Uh, refinding, they translate it. You could also say recovery, the recovery of the soul. And so he follows the spirit of the deep and it becomes an inward journey. And then in chapter 10, called Instruction, Belerum, uh, Elijah, he learns that Elijah, from, from Salome, Elijah, Salome tells him that she is his sister, his sister soul, that Elijah is his father, his spiritual father, the archetypal father, and then Jung asks, but who's our mother? You're my sister, who's our mother? And here you have Jung's naivete, as though, you know, these are real people. He's talking, you tell me you're, you're my sister and that's my father? Well, who's our mother then? You know, put her on the spot. And she says, surprisingly, Maria. Maria's our mother. And Jung said, what? Maria's our mother? That means I'm, I'm Christ. I'm not Christ. And he starts arguing with her. She says, yes, you are. And he says, oh, poo, poo, you're, you're nothing but symbols. And they look at him and they say, we're not symbols. We're real. And he... Uh, is astonished because he can't dismiss them as, quotes, mere symbols. Now he has to take them on their own terms. He has to encounter them. He has to dialogue with them. And then you have the famous chapter 11, which I knew about uh, more or less beforehand because uh, Jung tells the story of what happened in this act of imagination in his 1925 seminars at the, at the Psychological Club that's been published for some years now. And this is a, 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 an incredible scene where he goes back and uh, he sees the two snakes, a dark snake and, and, a, and a white snake, fighting with each other. And eventually they, they come to terms with each other and, and uh, uh, one takes on some of the coloration of the other one and they make a passage for him. And he goes in and he finds Elijah and there's Salome and, and their snake following. And then he... Uh, realizes that Salome is blind and he has a vision. They, they take him up, up to a place, up to a high place, and he has a vision of the crucifixion. And it is so vivid. He watches Christ being crucified on Good Friday and, and it's so vivid and he bursts into tears uh, and he has this deep uh, empathy for the suffering Christ. And then he notices that he himself uh, is turning into a, a crucified figure and the serpent is winding around him and his head is turning into the head of a, of a lion, so becoming a monstrous, strange figure, but in the image of the crucified Christ. And at that moment, Salome looks at him and prays to him as though he were the Christ and she says, heal me. And he scoffs her, what do you mean heal you? I'm, I'm not a healer. And lo and behold, she becomes but she gets her sight back and she can see, she is healed. And Jung is amazed by this and, and then they look at Elijah and he's turning into a flame of fire and she kneels down in front of him and Jung can't take any more and he runs out into the dark night. And uh, that's the end of Prima, uh, uh, Liber Primus. Um, uh, I mean, you could make an opera out of this. This is fantastic uh, material, this descent into the underworld, meeting these figures, 